It is a memorial uplifting and confident. A visitor looks out over the city and the churning waters of the East River and the direction of the Statue of Liberty, the shadow of the United Nations, the ocean in Europe. It is the long view that Franklin Roosevelt had for America. Franklin Roosevelt gave the speech of the Four Freedoms on January 6, 1941. William Allen Wright, a great Republican editor in Kansas, upon hearing the speech said, this is a new Magna Carta for democracy. A great occasion, a great purpose, and a great man have come together to give a legacy for democracy that every American will forever be proud of. Of course, what Roosevelt was talking about was the terrible cost of a war that we were about to enter without being able to prevent it. And he was saying that the only way that that generation of Americans could justify the terrible brutality, cost, and cruelty of that war was for each of us to pledge that out of it would come a different world, a world of the four freedoms, a world based upon freedom of speech and expression, freedom of worship, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. When the United Nations Charter was written and adopted, those words are in it. When Eleanor Roosevelt worked to adopt the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, those words are in it. This is not a job that is uh, going to go on forever. He said, this is a job for each generation to face and accept the challenge. The only words that are inscribed in this magnificent work of art are the words of the four freedoms in the room that Louis Kahn created as a very special place in his reverence for Franklin Roosevelt. So t when we dedicated the park in October, the next day we dedicated the United Nations, asked them to become part of it too. And the Secretary General came and all of the ambassadors of the United Nations came and I thought it was so appropriate that each day as they go to work, they would be able to look out and see the Four Freedoms Park and have a feeling for it. And Mrs. Mrs. Ban Ki-moon came last week. We were very specially pleased. This isn't a monument to a president in a partisan way. He was a person who didn't want monuments. This is a monument for ourselves. We remember Franklin Roosevelt. But more significantly, we remember what it was all about in World War II and what the generation since then has striven to try to accomplish and build. So today, as you come here and see this park, I hope that you'll be moved by its spiritual dimension and so many are. You can come in large groups. You can come by yourself. And I think everybody, whatever the weather, will be deeply moved by the experience of just identifying with it. So today, all of my colleagues, I speak for all of them, first in thanking them for their labors over these years, but thanking you for supporting us, and uh, I hope remaining the stalwart supporters of uh, this entity. It's done a great thing for New York. I think the mayor described it as one of the most beautiful public spaces that had been created in many, many years in our city. So as we enjoy this day, and as we drink FDR martinis, <laughs> and fortunately that was his favorite drink because it's not colored, and therefore we don't have to worry about the granite if you spell it. A very important consideration that we have to keep very much in mind. <clears throat> we hope you'll come often. Uh, just last week the Australian ambassador was telling me that he was out here and he saw an Asian woman in a wheelchair reading the Four Freedoms out loud with tears streaming down her face. There was a fourth grade class here last week with the teacher having all of her students together, some of them disabled, telling the story of Franklin Roosevelt and how he overcame polio and an almost permanent disability and how he came to lift this nation from its knees and take us through the Great Depression and through the World War. The children of America who will come here will know what Arthur Schlesinger meant when he said that history is to a nation what memory is to a person. If we forget our history, we lose an awful lot about of what we are about. 
If we can remember our history and identify ourselves as Americans and the ideals that from the days of our founding fathers we have tried to crystallize, we will remain and always will be a great country. Thank you for being here and come again soon. I just want to say a word for Peter Duchin. I need it on the I throw it in there. <laughs> Peter's father was the great bandmaster of the Roosevelt era, Eddie Duchin, and his son has carried that legacy forward and is still the great bandmaster of our time. Thank you, Peter, for being here. I thought I would sing a song if you don't mind. <laughs> Maybe somebody will. Sure.